Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment you've been waiting for for a couple of days now at least. Um, we are back and live for me, but not for you, because this is a YouTube series. If none of that made sense, it's because I did not sleep well last night or the night before. Um, I drove from my house very, very far on Friday and very, very far back, 313 miles in each direction. So. We're, uh, we're doing what we got. Uh, it is the first week of January. Jack Duplessis has recovered from his strained bicep. First week of May, so to speak. We got another four months to go this episode. And as always, I will drop the power rankings right here. Um, did everyone enjoy the show yesterday? Uh, how is everyone's Christmas shopping going? Have you, have you bought everything you need to? I doubt it. I don't believe you. But... It's okay. You still got a little tiny bit of time. Like, order in the next two days. Did you remember your parents? Did you get your grandparents anything? If you forgot your wife, I can't help you. But I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, Christmas time is chaotic, but I will try to get uh, multiple episodes out and not uh, neglect you. I will be home quite a bit and not traveling too, too much. So I will do my best. Maybe I'll double record and, like, queue one up to publish later. Something like that. I don't try to make a habit of it, but I'll do what I gotta do. Anyway, uh, that's enough of that. I hope you enjoyed the power rankings. I'll see you on the other side. We return for Pride Bushido 12 for stuff. Uh, fight in episode 13. Let's get straight into it. Jack Duplessis versus Hidehiko Yoshida. Obviously, I'm just gonna call him Yoshida. Though Hidehiko isn't too bad as far as the Japanese names I've struggled with so far. Jack Duplessis is an 8-1 fighter. He is making his Pride debut. After a four wins, one loss run in K1 Heroes. And Hidehiko is seven wins, five losses, one draw in his career. And mm, pretty much the whole career has come in pride so far. So, it's on a two-fight losing streak. Jack's on a four-fight winning streak. And is a minus 300 favorite. Jack Duplessis minus 300. Uh, Jack Duplessis wrestling style versus Hidehiko's judo style. Hideko gets a loud cheer. Jack Duplessis is a South African, and this is, in fact, in Japan. 10-minute first round. Jack hits a nice straight right to start. Coming forward on the attack, Yoshida with the counter jab. Right cross lands hard from Jack. Jack, of course, listed as wrestling style, but really is more of a puncher. Lands a good right hand. Quick exchange of strikes. Doesn't land. Jack looking to strike again. Yoshida hits the jab. Straight right from Jack. Yoshida's hurt. J... Jack tries to finish him with a big right hook, but Yoshida manages to dodge it and clear his head. No fear of Yoshida from Jack. Beauty of a straight right again. He's ro ro Jack's rocked him once. Nothing but air with a big right there, though. Four minutes into the fight. Crunching right hook from Jack. Moves forward, trying to... Again, no straight right from Jack again. Right cross. Uh, Jack's not really a ground game guy, and Yoshida doesn't seem eager to get there. Jack comes forward. Straight right again. Center of the ring. Jack coming forward to attack. Yoshida with the counter left. Right hook from Jack. Jack landing at a very high rate here in this first round. Remember, Japanese, uh, at least Pride, fights are scored in their entirety. Um, quick exchange. Exchange doesn't lead to anything. Two fighters coming forward to engage. Jack with a nice right hook again. Two guys trading blows. Counter left from Yoshida. Right to the side of the ribs. Jack changing levels there for a nice body shot. Yoshida might try some grappling. Jack hits him with the right cross instead. As typically happens. Counter jab from Yoshida. Jack probably would have had a career in uh, boxing if he ever wanted one. Two jabs and a straight right from Jack. Beauty of a straight right. He's rocked. Jack trying to finish the fight. And round number one ends. 22 jabs and 9 power punches to just 6 jabs from Yoshida. Jack's certainly winning the first round. Let's get into the second. Again, the fight scored its entirety. But it seems hard to imagine Yoshida is going to find a way in the next 5 minutes to uh, finish this fight. Great right hook from Jack. Yoshida moves to the clinch, trying to push him up against the ropes. Jack's muscled against the ropes. Yoshida's just kind of wear him down there. Um, tries to smother him there, but Jack uses his wrestling base to get back in the middle. Two guys getting back to strike. Right hand from Yoshida. Left and right from Jack. Quick one-two combo. Faints. Yoshida overexposed. Gets hit with a nice right hook. Beauty of a straight right there. Jack definitely finding his combos, finding his range. 14 minutes into the fight. He's getting a little exhausted, but there's only 20 seconds left. Jack scores with a jab and a right cross blocked, and that is the end of round number two. Round number two, Jack landed four power punches and 10 jabs to Yoshida's 15 jabs, 
but I think Jack still wins it. Oh, there's a final round now. I don't understand how pride rules work, but I guess we're into the third round. Um, Jack is very tired now, and there's only five minutes left. Or there's uh, five minutes, but Yoshida's really tired. Jack with the beauty of a straight right there, though. Nice one-two from Yoshida. Jack nails a right cross. Oh, right cross lands hard from Jack. Yoshida trying to grapple here. Quick left jab and a right hook. He's on the verge of exhaustion. Two and a half minutes left. Maybe Yoshida's looking to uh, get a takedown. Oh, no, he's looking punch drunk. Jack smashes him down. He's down. Jack pounding away at his face. Several clean blows. Yoshida's blocking some there, though. Tries for the uh, attempt. Jack tries for the arm bar there. Ground and pound from Jack. Yoshida trying to get to guard, and that is going to end the fight. No stoppage for Jack here. But Jack did land 15 ground strikes, 4 ground power strikes, 3 jabs, 7 power punches to Yoshida's uh, 3 total punch jabs in that round. So, official decisions. All 3 judges are going to give the fight to Jack Duplessis. Um, Jack now moves to 9-1 and one and comfortably, very comfortably, wins his Pride debut fight. Congratulations, Jack. Um, unanimous decision in round number five. Oh, unfortunately, rest in peace, Hidehiko has been cut following his loss to Jack Duplessis. Shh. Tough, tough break, but... Oh, and so a Palele, so... some 0-4 uh, oh in Pride, brutal. So, some, some familiar names getting cut from Pride, but... We'll have to see what happens. Alright, and in... News as we enter late May, Edson... Uh, Durago, the fighter who sounds most like a Rocky villain, 6-4 and four record, will be facing Eric Fonga at Pride 56. 7-3 um, and three, Eric Fonga versus 6-4 and four as in Drago, so not too dissimilar of records. Uh, Drago on a two-fight losing streak, and I believe Fonga on a two-fight winning streak, uh, one-fight losing streak. He lost to Sergei Kartonov. Um, so, there you go. Fonga versus Drago, Pride 56. Well, there's some interesting news. Ron Francis Jr. having uh, gone three and one in Elite XC, one and zero in Strike Force, and never fought outside America, is crossing the ocean because Ron Francis Jr. has just signed an exclusive contract with Pride. So that'll be very interesting. We now have three fighters in Pride. That would be Jack Duplessis, uh, Eric Fonga, and Ron Francis Jr. Ron is comfortable in a cage and a ring, so. Whatever whatever happens, happens. But Ron Francis Jr., over the seas. Billy Willie has also been faced to f booked to face Justin McCauley at Elite XC. McCauley versus Willie in the main event for the heavyweight title. Billy Willie 3-1 and one in Elite XC. And Justin McCauley is 2-0 uh, and oh in Elite XC. 12-7-2 overall. Billy Willie is a massive favorite. And that fight will be in July and will be on this show. Will we see Billy Willie become the fourth fighter in our... Uh, Fourth fighter in the series to be a champion. Hopefully, obviously. Um, very excited for that. Just 22 years old. And he will be fighting for the Elite XC Heavyweight Championship. The belt formerly held by... Nobody. No, never mind. Thought Ron Francis Jr. challenged for it, but did not win it. But So, that's very exciting. Title shot for one of our guys is always big, big news. And that'll be in July, and we're already in week two of June. So, let's do this. And we are over in Japan at K1, Bobby the Bruiser Braxton, whose picture hasn't loaded yet, but that's this is what he's going to look like. Um, I fixed it, but I couldn't fix it in time for this fight. I had to fix it for the next one, but that's him right there. Isn't he beautiful? Anyway, Bobby the Bruiser Braxton going head-to-head -head with Yusuke Crusher Kabaguchi in K1 Heroes Heavyweight Division in the main event of the evening. Bobby Braxton is minus 330 favorite and is an 8-3 and three fighter. Facing off against Yusuke Kabaguchi is a 5-2 and two judo fighter, plus 260 underdog. Uh, let's get straight into it. Two men going head-to-head -head in the ring with Mario Yamasaki overseeing. Here we go. Bobby Braxton ignores the offer to touch Gruds. Two guys come together. Kabaguchi misses a right kick. Bobby lands a couple of jabs. Left hand, right cross from Bobby. Two guys engaging. Very active fight here. Bobby tries for a spin kick. Awesome. Kabaguchi tries a load kick. Can't get it. Kabaguchi goes takedown. Two left jabs and a kick to the legs. Bobby the Bruiser Braxton does have uh, eight wins, all by KO and TKO. Um, Kabaguchi chose for the judo throw. Braxton manages to block that. Kabaguchi, more judo throw attempts here. Uh, Braxton can't get away from the ropes, it looks like. Um... 
Braxton's again can't get away from the takedown or can't get away from the ropes, but is blocking a lot of takedowns here. His one decision loss of his career came when he kind of just got ground against the ropes for a solid ten minutes. You'd think Kawaguchi would be def exhausting himself here with all these takedown attempts, but that's like ten now. Uh, Braxton Braxton's ability to escape from the ropes and from that bad situation is unfortunate. Um, it's not great. Every 10, 20 seconds here. Uh, Kawaguchi tries another takedown, and Braxton blocks it. So, so far, he's like 0 for 20. But Braxton can't get away. This is kind of like watching Shavkat versus Wonderboy. Um, rest in peace. Very sad. Very sad. Um, three minutes left in the round now, and it's just judo throw after judo throw. This is super, super boring. Um, Braxton tangled up in the ropes. Kawaguchi exhausted here. I think that there's going to be more than just one round because it's the main event. So luckily, Bobby will be able to... Oh, finally, Bobby gets free um, with a minute 15 left in the round. Left jab from Braxton. Uh, I'm forcing an exchange of strikes. Kyle Gucci throws a counter jab, can't get it. Bobby misses a 1-2, comes closer confidently. Straight right from Braxton. Kyle Gucci trying to grapple. Leg kick to end the round. That'll give Kyle Gucci something to think about. Kyle Gucci 0 for 21 on takedowns in that round and landed one jab while Bobby... Braxton landed two jabs, uh, 14, sorry, two jab kicks, 14 jab punches, and a power punch. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a whole fight thing, so we'll have to see what happens. Hopefully, Bobby can get away from Kawaguchi and uh, can go ahead and do some damage here. Beauty of a straight right from Braxton as we start the second round. Kawaguchi, of course, wants to take down two left hands and a right cross. Bobby seems to get not pinned against that vicious right cross from Braxton. Kawaguchi's on the floor, pounding away on his face now. Kawaguchi's getting destroyed. Yamasaki has to stop it, and your winner by TKO. Moving on to 9-3 and three overall, Bobby the Bruiser Braxton at 1 minute, 8 second in round number 2. Congratulations to Bobby, who has now like I said moves to 9-3 and three, at 3-0 three and oh in K1 Heroes. Um, it doesn't, he doesn't seem to have a local ranking in K1 Heroes. Um, yeah, no, no local ranking in K1 Heroes, it looks like, um, but he did just beat Kawaguchi, who is, doesn't say he's ranked with, uh, K1 Heroes, oh, it's Kawaguchi's Kawaguchi's K1 debut, so, uh, not a successful K1 debut for Kawaguchi, but a very successful third fight for Bobby the Bruiser Braxton, congratulations, Bobby, good fight, all right, and this weekend isn't over yet, it is Sunday, week... Number one of June 2009, we're coming across the nation to Nevada. George St. Pierre will be defending his title against Chris Lytle. Josh Gunderson will be defending his against Leonard Garcia. Actually, I don't know if either one of those is a champion. Yeah, Gunderson is the champion. So, But the third fight on the card, Alex O'Reilly faces off with Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson 10-1 overall, 1-0 in the UFC. Alex O'Reilly 10-2 overall, 1-1 in the UFC. Um, should be a close fight, similarly ranked fighters, um, and of course Roy's one loss in his career came to Bruno Guimas as he lost his uh, King of the Cage heavyweight title, so uh, big country versus the Maverick, it's going to be a fantastic fight, uh, that's the only fight we've got on the card here tonight, so here it is. Uh, Roy Nelson, jiu-jitsu specialist, 10-1 overall, 1-1 one one against our guys so far, uh, plus 190. Underdog, Alex the Malvergo O'Reilly from Dublin is a 10-2 fighter, mixed martial arts specialist, and a minus 250 favorite. Um, he, like I said, he is 1-1 one one in the UFC so far, having lost to Mike Whitehead on his debut, but punched out Gabriel Gonzaga in 47 seconds. In his comeback fight, his contract runs for that's it. He was, he's out of guaranteed fights, but UFC can keep working if they want. If they want, and judging by the skill of Alex O'Reilly, I'm sure they will. He is. He fought. He fought against world ranked fighters last time. Um, it says he's unranked, but I think he's ranked in the UFC. It's just I can never remember how to look at the rankings in a fight, but whatever. Let's get straight into it. We're not here for talking. We're here for action. And there will be action between Big Country and Alex O'Reilly. Alex O'Reilly has only gone to two decisions in his entire career, um, winning both of them. All right, and they get straight into it. O'Reilly grabs Nelson, trying to muscle him up against the cage. Roy Nelson's now pinned to the cage by Alex O'Reilly. O'Reilly keeping him there. They're exchanging some punches. 
O'Reilly keeping him grounded up against that cage, throwing short, short little punches. Herb Dean resets them. Minute and a half left. O'Reilly forcing a striking exchange. Nelson lands a left hand. O'Reilly can't hit anything. Straight right from Nelson lands hard. Misses a punch there. O'Reilly grapples him and lands some short strikes to the head. Not much doing there in that. 26 jabs from O'Reilly and one power punch each should probably give that first round to O'Reilly. Two guys coming together. Quick exchange. Nothing much there. Left jab. Misses a right cross. Nearly lands a head kick from O'Reilly. Getting to the gas tank a little bit as we're in the second round. High kick from O'Reilly. Just a glancing blow, really. Nelson lands a jab. O'Reilly lands jab and cross. Left hand. Low kick to the front leg. That had to have hurt. Beauty of a straight right from Nelson, though. O'Reilly kicking that lead leg out from under Roy Nelson. Both guys engaging. Jab and a right cross from O'Reilly. Good right hook from O'Reilly. He's landing his combos now. Nelson misses there, and O'Reilly grabs him. He's going to muscle him up against the cage here, and he's going to grind him there for the next 45 seconds. Hitting each other with those short little punches. Let's check the stats on that round. 12 jabs, 4 jab kicks, versus just 2 jabs and a power punch from Roy Nelson. Another O'Reilly round for me. Nelson's in deep trouble. Needs a finish here. Back up a stool, but he's psyched. He's ready to go. Both fighters coming together to strike. Nelson with the left cross. O'Reilly, it's a left jab, misses the right head kick. O'Reilly grabs Nelson. He's going to muscle him up against the cage. O'Reilly knows he's winning two rounds now and just really needs to finish this well. He's showing great control by pressing Nelson against the cage, and they dirty box for 30 seconds. Smothering him in dirty boxing. We'll see if the referee resets them. Another minute later, Nelson wrestles way out of trouble and back in the center with two minutes to go. Quick kick from O'Reilly. Both fighters stepping into strike with a minute and a half left. Nelson checks the leg kick. Left jab from O'Reilly. Nelson with the 1-2. They're looking shattered and they're going to clinch rather than find their range. O'Reilly's going to take advantage of that and muscle Nelson up against the cage again. He doesn't have a lot to give, but all he needs is 45 seconds. Nelson works out. 15 seconds left in the fight. Two guys engage. Counterattack. Right hand from O'Reilly. And that is the end of the fight. That round was very, very, very even. Roy Nelson out jabbed him 1-0. Or 16 15 and one jab kick each so tough to say but i could see it either way for the third round but all three judges have scored the fight 30 27 for your winner by unanimous decision alex o'reilly alex the maverick o'reilly now moves to 11 and 2 overall he is 2 and 1 in the ufc on a two fight winning streak uh having beaten the i think fifth ranked uh ufc fighter UFC heavyweight, so big, big win from Alex O'Reilly. Um, very exciting there. The fight was okay, to be honest. Uh, he wants a rematch with Mike Whitehead. That would be fantastic. Lost to a Dars choke uh, three minutes into the second round last time they fought. So congratulations to Alex O'Reilly. Only a bit of news as we enter mid-June here. Uh, Bobby Braxton extended his deal with K1 Heroes. So, you know, good for him. Uh, George Joe has been booked to face Tiago Big Monster. A 4-0 prospect from Cage Warriors and KSW. He's racked up a 2-0 record in KSW so far. And will be challenging George Joe for his KSW heavyweight title in July. That should be a very good fight. Uh, George Joe, the 10th ranked heavyweight in the world. And George Joe's an enormous favorite, of course. Because it's George Joe and he's a legend. But very cool fight. We will see that in July as well. But we are getting close to... Some of the big, big fights in uh, July. So let's just keep trucking. Well, bad news. Giorgio's fight was canceled. Um, he will no longer be defending the KSW Heavyweight Championship against... Uh, I don't even remember who that guy was. Tiago Big Monster. Because KSW closed. Uh, they went bankrupt. And thus, no no fights. Uh, so let me... Actually, let me check if there's a... There you go. Uh, the, the final KSW heavyweight champion, George Joe. KSW is dead. Uh, they were open for six years, uh, had 16 events, and absolutely no money. So KSW is dead. Rest in peace. And we are back at the hollowed grounds of Elite XC. Justin McCulley versus Billy Wheelie is our main event and is the event that we care about here. Uh, Justin McCulley attempting to make the first defense of his... Uh, Elite XC Heavyweight Championship. He won that championship off of Tommy Sauer back in January of 2008. And he's defending it for the first time in uh, July of 2009. 
So if anyone's wondering why the American uh, MMA Indies never made it big, there you have it. Um, he's lost three times since then against Ben Rothwell, Marcus Jones, and Barack Lesnar, but all of those were in King of the Cage and don't matter at all for this the purposes of this. So, Justin McCulley, a plus 540 underdog, Billy Willie, a minus 680 favorite as the Thug Jitsu Specialist should be from Little Rock, Arkansas. Justin McCulley is from Huntington Beach, has kind of the hometown favorite, but is uh, less of a favorite because he's, you know, 30 pounds lighter than Billy Willie. Two guys touch gloves as we start the fight, trading blows. McCulley manages a counter jab, left jab from Willie. Thug Jitsu Specialist, 7-1 in his career. Straight right lands hard from him. Willie coming forward now. Bob's way out of the jab, moves into the pocket. McCulley dodges both punches on the follow-up, though. Willie with a left cross. McCulley with a jab. Willie a little more aggressive. Oh, McCulley grabs, catches his leg kick and tries for a takedown. Willie yanks his leg free before the takedown can finish. McCulley lands a left jab. Willie coming forward now. Walking down, McCulley misses with the left. Nice straight right from Willie. Two guys trading leather here with a minute left in the round. Willie coming forward. Forward, forward, forward for Willie. That's what Thug Jitsu is all about. Roundhouse kick to the body. Time expires as we hit the end of round number one. Looks like a 10-9 for Billy Willie with seven power with one power punch, seven punch jabs, one jab kick, two just three jab punches from Justin McCulley, who isn't really managing much in this fight so far. As we head into round number two, um... Again, this is a five-rounder, because it's the main event. Jab from Willie, misses with the vicious right hand. Willie forcing a striking exchange. Avoids the jab there, though. Willie hits a nice straight right, giving a few gulps of breath there. Trading some leather as we keep going into this fight. McCulley with the left hand. Willie missing a 1-2 combo. Coming forward now, in the pocket. Misses two punches again. Past the halfway mark in the round. Willie's accuracy has gone down tremendously in the second round. Pressuring McCulley now. Not really landing a lot in round number two. Uh, the two fighters coming forward. Gets a right hook, though, as Willie. McCulley tries for a takedown at the end of this round. Lands it and doesn't really have any time to do anything with it. Um, tough to say. Only five jabs from Willie. One takedown, one jab from McCulley. Uh, that round could freely go either way. But it makes me sick to link about it. So, you know, back underway now. Quick exchange of strikes, nobody lands anything. Both guys, uh, we'll just say they're fighting heavily defensive. Not landing much at all, two guys coming forward to engage. Left jab and a kick to the rear leg. Billy Willie misses two punches, Justin McCoy misses one. We're looking pretty tired, tries to, tri ooh, and trip take down from Billy Willies. Takes the back, this is Thug Jitsu right here, goes for the rear naked choke, McCoy blocks it. Blocks the rolling over. Willie gets his hooks in now. Tries the rear naked choke, and he gets it. There you go. Billy Willie chokes out Justin McCulley with a rear naked choke. And he wins the Elite XC Heavyweight Championship. So your winner, by submission, Billy Willie is your new Elite XC Heavyweight Champion. 8-1 and one in his career. Thug Jitsu prevails again. Congratulations to Billy Willie for picking up the first gold of his career. We have now had four out of our 11 fighters become champions. Oh shoot, I accidentally opened the spreadsheet without uh, pausing the thing. Alright, so Billy Willie beat Justin McCulley to win the championship, but we also have some more fights denounced. Ron Francis Jr. is going to make his Pride debut versus Carl... <sighs> Sumanudafa. Sumanudafa. Sumanua. Sumatu. Oh my gosh. Sumatu. I'm gonna have to Google that. He beat Sola Palele, but lost to Rob Broughton. Um, and doesn't really have a whole lot going on for him. Both guys, uh, Ron Francis Jr., 5 and 1. And Carl Sumanudafa is 4 and 2. So, uh, you know, it of it's definitely an undercard fight on Pride, what, 57 now? Yeah. Company rating 17 versus company ranking 19, but it'll be a big opportunity for Ron to get his first win in the ropes of Pride. But the bigger fight, uh, George Joe versus Dion Staring at Cage Rage 31, because, you know, we haven't seen enough uh, Dion Staring yet. Staring lost to George Joe a long time ago at Cage Rage 14 in October 2005 in what would have been... I'm not sure what, what that would have been for George. 
George's uh, second ever fight. Uh, George has not lost since. And Staring has lost plenty of times since. But he did put together a four-fight win streak across Cage Warriors and Cage Rage to, sure, earn this title shot. Uh, sh should be a nice walkover for uh, George Joe. But uh, he is a minus 1130 favorite. So... Ooh, Joe versus Staring 2. Very exciting stuff in August. We will see that on this episode. Bobby Braxton is booked to face Czech Congo at Cage 1 Heroes 26. Should be an excellent fight. Uh, Czech Congo has shown up in the series before where he lost to George Joe, as many, many men have done, but has fought his way back to an 11-3-1 record, 2-0 and in K1 Heroes, and he will be facing Bobby Braxton, who is a 9-3 and record after battling his way back from... Uh, a tough break of a, what's the word I'm looking for here? The tough break of, you know, it's uh, what, going three and three to start his career, but he has not lost since. So it's weird that he goes 0 and three in Pancrase and then three and 0 in K1 Heroes to start his, uh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, that'll be a great fight at K1 Heroes. What? I don't even remember. Hold on. Um, K1 Heroes 26, that will be in September. That will probably be the first fight on episode 14, but it will not be on this one. Um, we are entering August now, so that's exciting. Um, not sure how much activity we're going to get in August. I only remember one fight being listed, but we will have to see. Maybe we'll get some more booked for episode 14. We'll just have to find out. I know as well as you guys do. Here we are, deep on the undercard of Pride, Chapter 56. Edzin Drago versus Eric Fonga. Fonga attempting to regain some momentum after a... Uh, attempting to regain some momentum after a loss to Sergei Karatonov. Um, he is currently 3-2 and two in Pride overall. Edzin Drago is 6-4 and four and a 1-2 and two record in Pride. Uh, similar records for these two men. Um... But Fonga is a huge, huge favorite. A lot of natural talent on him. Muay Thai specialist, uh, only 22 years old, of course. Drago is 30 and is a Muay Thai specialist as well, so we should expect a Muay Thai-style fight. Beginning uh, round number one. Vicious right hand from Fonga. Right roundhouse kick to the ribs. Nothing significant for a bit. Drago pressuring. Drago being pressured from Fonga. Fonga with the left jab, straight right. Beautiful combo. Drago misses a uh, thing. Gets a, takes a leg kick. Drago misses with a counter left. Vicious right hand from Fonga misses. Lovely right head kick, though. Drago's backing off. Fonga rocked him. Gonna grab him into that Muay Thai Trent clinch. Drago's dazed. Huge knee to the stomach. Blocks the second knee. Big knee to the chest. Fonga is just destroying the chest of Drago here. He's got the Muay Thai clinch. Lands three huge knees. Closes the distance. And lands a crunching left hook. Drago's dazed. Right head kick. Fonga, he's out. Fonga lands a huge right head kick, and Edson Drago hits the pavement. Uh, five minutes and 49 seconds into round number one, Eric Fonga rises to eight and three with a vicious head kick, and Edson Drago is out cold. Congratulations to Eric Fonga. Now rises to four and two in pride overall. A little bit of news here as we get into late August. Um, Jack Duplessis has been booked to face Alistair Overeem at Pride 58, so you know... That's a fight and a half. They will be main eventing. Um, Jack is considered a mild underdog. Overeem, just 25-8 and eight record at age 29. That's an insane amount of fights. He is on a three-fight winning streak over Eric Esch, David Abbott, and Mark Hunt. Um, having lost to Josh Barnett and Fabrizio Verdum before then. He's yet to appear on our save, but the uh, Dutchman is a force of nature. And I am terribly excited to see him face with uh, Jack Duplessis in December 2009. That will be next video. We'll have to see what happens. But huge, huge, huge fight there. Um, let's check their heavyweight rankings. Overeem is 8th and Jack is 12th. So it should be a very good fight between the two of them. Anyway, just, I'm just stoked about that fight. That's, that'll be very cool. And as the main event of our episode tonight... George Joe will be facing Dion staring for the second time. Joe is a colossal favorite to defend his Cage Rage Heavyweight Championship for the, I don't know, fifth time. 
Uh, Joe has defended his Cage Rage Championship three times now, so this will be a fourth defense. Uh, Dion Staring, they have faced off before in, what, 2005? Four years ago now? Can you believe it? George Joe's second professional fight. Um, 11 and 6 versus 10 and 0. Oh, let's get straight into it. I don't expect this one to last long. George the Gentleman Joe facing off. 5x5. Five five. Kickboxing versus hard nose boxing. Let's get straight into it. Two guys, quick strikes, meeting into the center now. Joe manages to block across, absorbs a two-punch punch flurry, lands a left and a right cross that lands hard. Staring goes to the takedown. George sprawls. They stand and trade. Joe with a straight right that lands hard. Crunching right hook from Joe. Getting his range now on the boxing. Staring for the take takedown attempt now. Joe with the sprawl, moves out of range. Got very good at not getting tackled in jail. Staring hits a knee strike to the body from that. Pins Joe to the cage now and trying for that takedown. Joe gets taken down, has to pull guard. Glaring with a fast elbow strike. Joe tries for an arm bar. Uh, doesn't give it up. And that is the end of round number one. One of three takedowns from Dion Staring. Three power punches and a power jab from Joe. Uh, hypothetically, it could be a staring round, but probably not. Um, Joe knows it's his fight to lose. Confidence rising. Joe throws a punch. Staring again. Staring is going to try to grapple here. Joe moving in closer, ready to attack. Beauty of a straight right from Joe. Staring shoots that takedown. Joe sprawls, blocks, steps. Exchange of strikes, not much happens. Again, Staring's going to try as many takedowns as he can because he knows he can't match Joe on the feet. Joe looking to open up an attack. Crunching right hook from him now, passing the halfway mark in the second round. Joe tries to strike. Jab from Joe, misses. Staring shoots takedown now. Sprawl again from Joe. Joe comes looking to strike. Joe takes the initiative. Quick punch and misses. Joe's starting to breathe a little heavier. Hits a straight right, though. Vicious right cross. Staring falls down to the floor. Joe's going to jump on him and start pounding away. Staring's getting pasted, and the referee has to stop the fight. Here's your winner by TKO, and has defended his uh, Cage Rage Heavyweight Championship for the fourth time. George the Gentleman Joe. Four minutes and 15 seconds into the second round. Uh, it took him three minutes longer this time to beat Dion Staring. So congratulations to Dion Staring for, you know, lasting slightly longer. Drops to 11-7, and 7 and George Joe stays at a perfect 11-0 and 0 as we finish this episode. Joe remains a solid number one on the chart. I'm very, I'm actually going to check when we get to Monday how long is left in Joe's cage rage contract if he's going to elect to re-sign he, he could be making a very good case at higher levels of competition here for sure. Um, but he has, on his contract, he's completed four fights, and he has six fights remaining on that contract. He is ranked the ninth ranked, he's the ninth ranked heavyweight in the world, and of course is a perfect 11 and 0. Has been climbing up those records. So, boy, Joe. And that will be the end of our episode here tonight. Thank you all for watching so much. I appreciate every one of you who likes, subscribes, comments, whatever, whatever. Um, if I don't see you before then, Merry, Merry Christmas. Um, and have a great year, guys.